Okay, so um, I am uh, new to Fedora and also from a non-technical background. So I'm going to share how I fell into the technical side. Well, the, uh, from the non-technical side, uh, for a very long time, until like a couple of years back, I was in, I was a hardcore researcher working in cancer research and stuff like that. As this meme shows, I was actually opening up DNAs, manipulating them and all that stuff. Um, until like, I think probably in my bachelor's or so, I remember when I was asked for system preferences, I was so naive to say that this is a color is my system preference. So I was that naive. The only thing that I actually used my laptop was to, let's be real, to watch movies. But when I came to my master's, I did find another purpose to my laptop. I was working on my assignments and um, more, for most of it, I was actually using my laptop for a course called Bioinformatics, which has introduced me to using different kinds of softwares that can be used to easily manipulate the DNAs without actually doing the uh, real experiment. Like the, uh, you, everything can be done online, like using the software, manipulating the uh, DNA sequences, protein sequences, and all that. And I was actually thrilled and enthralled. And by knowing that there are softwares that can actually make experiments move a lot faster, easier, I was so interested and in, engrossed in it. And then I made sure that I aced the course, and then the semester got over. And then I got really busy with my thesis during my master's, and I didn't have time to explore more about it, although I really wanted to. And then, um, I finished up my master's and then landed in job, full-time job, which was really hectic. And I couldn't think much about bioinformatics or explore it. Um, but there was this strong desire, this motivation in me that I really wanted to explore it and know more about the different softwares, which actually make science a lot easier. So that's when I came across this magical book which is which I was able to find it for free online. So like it says, it is actually for beginners and it really helped me a lot to write my first program, first code. I was very excited and with this a completely new window open up. And then I came to know that there are so many open sources available outside and so much of information available outside and I was so into it, like I, that almost became my full-time job, like trying to learn new things, trying to learn programming, trying to learn Python, know more about it, know uh, many things like, and I, most of the times I remember that when I was working, whenever I had some time, I used to open uh, online IDEs like Ripple and start solving different uh, problems in bioinformatics that used Python and all that. And I also remember taking a course on Coursera, which actually helped me write a lot of complicated algorithms that can be used to manipulate DNA sequences. Then I became, yes, from someone who has been opening up DNAs uh, to manipulate, I became the sprint biological that was a huge accomplishment for me because I did all this on my own uh, with my strong motivation, which I feel everyone needs it, like has to believe in themselves. So now, from how did I come from what is Fedora to I am Fedora, like almost, because it's just been a month. Um, after uh, three years into my research, uh, working as a full-time researcher, I realized that unfortunately my journey in the scientific research has uh, gone to the space where uh, it's not made for me anymore. I, it's very unfortunate that it ended up that way, but yeah, I think things just didn't fly and uh, it turned out that it's not a cup of my tea anymore. 
And then I had to take a break to retrospect, think what I really need, what I really want to do. And that did give me a new perspective of life, what my priorities are, what my likes are, what my dislikes are. And unfortunately, I also, my the job that I just like quit then, it also had a toxic environment which had a huge toll on my um, emotional well-being, I should say. So it was really stressful. So after I quit, it did give me a really like a new perspective about what I want to do and and also the strong desire to explore more about programming and stuff, it came back because now I had all the time in the world. I, I treated this now like learning new things and programming and Python and explore more new things became my full-time job. I used to wake up, uh, prep my lunch, everything, sit in front of the computer and then uh, just learn, learn practice programming stuff and a lot of other online courses there's so many online courses available so many open sources available it's it's so appalling to think about so many things that are available online for free um, and obviously i didn't have the economical uh, status to actually enroll into another master's course so i was very determined to do it on my own for free um, so I used to wake up, uh, study until 12 o'clock, have a lunch break, go for a walk, and then come back and then study again. So this used to be my schedule for about six months or so. But yes, also I had a very supportive family. My husband is very supportive. So that's the one reason why I could actually do it, like learn so much when I was out of office. Um, and then um, things went on and then because I was just uh, doing everything on my own, sitting at home, I actually didn't have the real-time experience as such that I needed to land in a technical job. Obviously, it, I was like just handling the data sets that are available through course or something. So clearly, that was not enough, and I didn't. I there are so many other complications as well. So I couldn't actually land in a technical job. But then I figured that I am good at writing. So I thought I should explore the scientific writing opportunity. So then I became, I am a scientific writer now. And like this meme says, yes, that is true. In the beginning, it I actually felt that I'm probably a horrible writer and I, I I am not cut out for writing, but no, 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 never doubt yourself. Just keep doing it. Uh, you will be there. You'll be there. Just persistence is the key. And then uh, while I started writing, when I started writing, the desire to again explore something on the technical side was back. And then I really wanted to explore the technical writing side of the. Um, it's the technical side of it. So uh, I Googled and then I stumbled upon a, a forum which mentioned a list of open sources that I can contribute to. That was the first time I actually heard about Fedora. So that forum gave a link to Fedora wiki pages and then I had, believe it or not, I had no idea what to do on the wiki pages. Uh, everything, all the information was so overwhelming and I started doubting myself. Um, I don't think I can do this because there, there are so many things that I am not aware of. So, but then I'm like, okay, let me just give it a try. Let me just see. So I made a resume <laughs> and then signed up for almost all the mailing lists that I could come across. And then guess what? All the emails bounced back. I have no idea why. I have no idea what I did. I must have done something wrong. But yes, so everything bounced back. But and then I just I was like, okay, maybe it's just a calling that technical writing is not probably for me. But one day I received an email from the NI Docs mentor session saying that uh, there, there is a mentor session this week and it will be great. Uh, so I thought like, okay, this is this is my calling. Okay, I really need to attend this. This came out of nowhere and I should not 
let go of this opportunity. So I went on to the session, not knowing about anything. Of course, like uh, there was a YouTube link on how to uh, organize stuff on Fedora or how to organize docs that was like hosted by Justin. So I saw that video, kind of had an idea about what's going on. Uh, so I attended the session and then guess what? In about two days or so, I did my first pull request. You see the golden border? Yes, it's that special to me. My first, first ever pull request. Uh, I was very happy about it. I am still very happy about it. It's such a huge accomplishment for me because I came from a completely different background where laptops are used for just watching movies or I see probably nothing so so from there to here it's a huge accomplishment for me and then um, uh, my first PR I actually did everything online I was too intimidated to even open the terminal and then do everything using command line and get 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 was something that's like I am still intimidated by it but I did not even want to type the word uh, letter G in Git, so was that intimidated? So, um, but then I was like, okay, now if I really want to be explore this technical writing and uh, be good at it, learn it, then I cannot do all my PRs online. I really, really need to push myself and start learning how to do things on command line. And now, guess what? Okay, command line is my best friend. I I prefer using command line to access folders. Uh, the other day I was asking my uh, husband about, can I open PowerPoint presentation through command line? Because it's such a pain to go to a uh, finder folder, search for it and all that. So you see, maybe I can open my presentation through command line. I was like, I don't think that's possible. I was like, oh. So yes, that that's, that's a long way that I came from. And, so as a new contributor, what, what am I doing here? Like, I had no idea what Fedora was before I even stumbled upon that um, uh, forum, uh, the uh, uh, post in the forum about the open source contributions and all that. So I didn't know that Fedora is actually an uh, operating system that you can, like, I didn't know. I didn't know about anything about Fedora. So. Um, my first, as a newbie, uh, uh, for any new contributors, Fedora has an excellent welcoming kit. So they create a ticket for you uh, where you can track your progress. And they also give you awesome uh, starting guides about what you, how to understand everything like what is open source, what is Fedora, and all those things. And then I spend a couple of uh, weeks understanding what open source is, why it is important, and why it is important for everybody to contribute to open source. It doesn't matter if you're from a technical background or a non-technical background, because there is something that anyone can, anyone can contribute to in open source. That That is one thing that I really learned. Um, so I did learn a lot in my first couple of weeks, and then everybody in this community are awesome, very friendly, very understanding. They answer all my silly non-technical questions. So it is great. And now I am actively contributing to the restructuring of DNI team page. So by that, I got very comfortable with command line Git and then almost very comfortable with command line and Git. I know there is still a lot, but you see, I, that's a lot for me so and then i am also understanding a lot about antora and then ascii docs and then i'm i was able like it's a learning it's a learning curve so i didn't know anything about uh, anything about markdown anything about um well i do know a little bit of a uh, little bit about markdown because uh i did work with jupyter notebooks uh at one point so Jupyter Notebooks did have an option for, I'm, I'm sure a lot of other things also have option for Markdown, but that's the first time that I came across Markdown. So I did have some idea, but uh, Justin mentioned that ASCII doc is very different from a lot of other uh, 
documenting softwares because every line is different in ascii doc so he said that a lot of people find it difficult to transition to ascii doctor i was like i don't think i have that problem because i have no idea about any other documentation uh, software so so yeah that was a great journey like my first month i learned so much being just for a month i learned so much about and or uh, documentation skills and then um prs creating issues attending so many meetings and also uh see uh helping organizing federal women stay 2020 that that is also a great experience for me and i am so happy to be here meet you all lovely people and then grow my network and all that so now coming to how fedora is going to be my strong new foundation for my career goal well the main uh, until now i don't know if it's because of the kind of background i was in until now like i couldn't make i couldn't grow my network at all while i was in the research because i think it's because everybody is busy with their own research thesis projects uh, while they are in uh, grad school and stuff so maybe that's why i was not able to grow my network i don't know what i did wrong but here in further i am looking forward to uh, grow my network meet new people and then also learn all the new technical things like get rebase the other day i was uh, trying to uh um i created a pull request made my comments and then uh my issue was not, my pull request was not being able to match because of some merge conflict so i was asked to do a git rebase so i quickly went online obviously and then said how do i rebase and then i got this one line uh command git rebase master i guess so i just like i typed it and like i'm done <laughs> but then i quickly quickly realized that i didn't do anything git rebase is actually a long procedure where you merge the conflict so from that i understood that git rebase as such is not complicated but merging conflicts is such a pain <laughs> i hope i don't do it again but you see that's how i learn it so i'm sure i will do it again and get better at it every time but yeah i did i did get rebase so yeah that is a huge accomplishment for me and then um i one day want to be called as technical and i really hope that day is very soon so that's what i'm looking forward to in fedora by contributing to fedora and meeting all new people and learning as much as i can to be called as technical one day uh since i am a newbie here uh so far i thought that technical writing is the only option that i might have but if i am wrong or if there is anything else that i can explore i am open to suggestions and guidance and advice from all you people and then also what else can i do in fedora um i have python sig in my mind but i am intimidated by it i i don't know like i i am not a great programmer i'm not i don't think i'm even a good programmer so i know basics of python pandas for data analysis and stuff but i think that's about it and i think i'm also struggling with imposter syndrome so so yeah i have i'm i have no idea where else i can contribute i have two things in my mind one is python sig and the other is uh uh patches so if there is anything else that if you think would probably be good for me like and also if there are any other career prospects that i can look out for not just technical writing that that would be really great so uh in the end i would like to say that me coming from a non technical background knowing nothing about uh programming or any of these things if i can come this far if i was able to do everything on my own uh i am sure you can do it too never let anyone tell you that you can't do it 
never let anyone doubt you never let anyone say that you're not cut out for this no don't let anyone demean you or don't let anyone treat you uh, that no you're a woman you can't do it or you're a non binary you can't do it so so don't let anyone say that and always believe in yourself persistence is key work hard whatever you work on work on it will definitely help you at one point or the other in the future so yes if i can do it you can do it for sure so don't give up never give up never give up just keep going and also i would like to take this opportunity to shout out um to my great mentors justin and nasir for on answering all my silly non technical questions any time of the day so yeah yeah that's a great shout out to them and also i thought this is something really nice to say that uh, i used my uh, command line again for this so thank you so much for listening to my story and i hope it is inspiring to other other people who are from who are planning to come into tech technical from a non technical background it's not difficult you just need to put in some time some effort uh work towards it and then you will be there for sure hi how are you thank you so much for sharing that that was awesome thank you so much um it's really impressive to see you here as a newbie and getting on screen to tell us the story I, there's just a lot of courage just in doing that so like i commend you for that and for all of the help that you've already given on like the diversity team i wasn't even aware of all of this other stuff you're learning and doing so awesome so that's really really Thank cool you. that you're involved um all where do you where would you like like your path in fedora to um beyond well, just technical maybe something more concrete i think so i was so since you were everybody is talking about and you were talking about badges a lot i thought i should explore badges a little bit uh and see if i can do anything in it so that's why i thing. think you should and not only that you should try to earn badges that will give you a ton of experience doing different things within fedora okay i will do that for sure totally um there are there is um development going on on the back end and then we mm -hmm. also have um like sysadmin type tasks that are involved like learning how to push the badge artwork to the website um and then we have some other coding that does go in, it get involved at YAML is the, they're written in YAML to write rules around our messaging system. So the, okay. the message, gosh, I'm gonna, they changed the name on it. Naming things is hard. It's either the fed message or message bus or like, <laughs> so anyway, it's the thing that take Fedora messaging. See, it has changed. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it, the YAML file takes the reads, the Fedora messaging, and automatically awards badges to people. Um, oh, okay. So there's mm -hmm. like all these different little pieces that work together. And then of course you have the design team and um, the people coming up with ideas. So since you're like a newbie, I'm like, do you have questions for us? You know, like, um, is there things you wanna ask us? We're here as a resource for you um or maybe even just comments and stuff you've learned over the weekend uh sorry stuff i would oh stuff you've learned or something maybe you really liked from the weekend okay. yes so um first of all like thank you so much for having me on fwd um and what did i learn i did learn a lot of things from all these beautiful people who who share their stories, inspiring stories that number one, never give up. Just just do what you want to do. Uh, believe in yourself. 
and more importantly by everyone that how important it is to network maybe that's one thing that i was not able to do until now so i'm really 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 looking forward to grow my network now so you know what's cool about network in fedora space versus outside fedora and this i was actually thinking this and i wanted to make this point is that outside of fedora and open communities it's very much about who you know already it's like who you know what connections do i have the neighbor my uncle's friend whatever um but with open source and a space like fedora we don't have that you know i mean yeah people might come from a different community with a good reputation or not um but nonetheless you have this chance it's a very open playing field um to just get involved and you have access right from the start you don't need to know that person or this person just to get yeah. into that space so yeah um i think it does allow like a an even more even playing fields for for networking. Yeah, and I also really like the fact that everything is open. Like you are like I am always being appreciated for all the nice things that I do or everything that I do even a small thing. There is a lot of appreciation, there is a lot of encouragement and there is a lot of um it's everything is open like everyone can see what i'm doing so that is one thing that i really like being part of the open source community because it's it's open <laughs> yep and you know what i think when um i'm out there working in that fashion you know it's kind of like it's a little it's like you know exposes you like a little bit right and something like new and different and i just think to myself like it doesn't really matter what the other person's opinion is. Like maybe they think it's not good enough or whatever, because I'm the one who's doing it and they're not. Yes. Yeah. So you're the person who's there actually doing the thing and other people can critique or whatever, or, you know, you get those worries in your head that that might come because it's just all out in the open, but um, you can have, you can find resolve and just knowing like, no, I'm here and I'm doing this work and it's good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for presenting. Thank you today. for the opportunity. <laughs> of course. And and all the help for with Fedora Women's Day. I think I'm gonna take a lunch break and then there's one more session. Oh no no no. Oh my gosh, you know what we oh, need yes. to do? Oh yes. Here it is. <laughs> it's real quick. What is your native language? Uh Telugu. <laughs> okay. Are you gonna speak it in that language for us? Yes. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna mute my Okay. నమస్కారం నా పేరు రమ్య నేను ఇండియాలో ఉన్న ఒక రాష్ట్రం తెలంగాణ నుంచి నేను ఒక మహిళని నేను తెలుగు మాట్లాడతాను వీ ఆర్ ఫ్రమ్ డిఫరెంట్ కంట్రీస్ వీ స్పీక్ డిఫరెంట్ లాంగ్వేజెస్ వీ ఆర్ డిఫరెంట్ వీ ఆర్ ఫ్రమ్ డిఫరెంట్ కల్చర్స్ ఐ డూ వెల్ అగైన్ ద సెకండ్ పాయింట్ ఓకే we are from different countries we speak different languages and we are of different cultures but fedora unites us with open source awesome <laughs> thank you that thank you great. so much of course i'll see everybody in a half an hour yes bye bye thank you everyone